from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. In another big week, we saw the AI battles continue to escalate. Google reorg to better focus on AI. Meta's Llama 3 was released. Taiwan Semiconductor is doubling its manufacturing capacity for NVIDIA high-end chips. Samsung got a $6.4 billion tranche of the Chips Act money. A Microsoft paper described Basa 1 that turns photos into a kind of creepy talking head. Mistral is doing a half a billion dollar plus raise at more than 2x its last valuation, which was just four months ago. And SAS introduced industry models in a sign that demand for domain-specific AI is actually taking shape. Since the AI awakening in November of 2022, the spending climate for enterprise tech has transformed. Customers are scraping money from other budgets to fund AI and running experiments in the desperate race for monetization. Names that were virtually unknown in early 2022, like OpenAI, Meta's Llama, and Anthropic, are vying with the cloud scale companies to get a piece of the pie. And notably, based on the latest survey data from ETR, while Google remains a distant third in overall cloud computing customer adoption, it has dramatically accelerated its presence in the all-important AI sector, closing the gap with AWS. Hello and welcome to this week's The Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. In this abbreviated breaking analysis, we'll show you how the spending patterns have changed since early 2022, prior to the launch of ChatGPT, and we'll share where customers are putting their bets in AI platforms today. Let's take a look back at 2022. So the chart here shows spending momentum, which is on the vertical axis. And that's something that we call net score. The horizontal axis is pervasion, which is represented by the ends that are applied to that sector. So if an IT decision maker says, yes, we're spending money on this sector, it gets an end. And the N overall in the survey is about 1800. So the pervasion is a function of the N within the sector divided by the total N in the survey. That 40% line, that red line at the 40% on the vertical axis, that represents highly elevated spending momentum, a high net score. Now, at the time, there were four sectors that were above that magic 40% mark, AI, containers, RPA, and cloud computing. And notice the note, the survey pervasion for machine learning and AI was 24% at the time. So again, that's the ends in that MLAI sector divided by the total end of the survey. This survey back then was, it was probably like 16, 1700. So pretty healthy balance you saw there spreading the wealth around for some of the transformative sectors like cloud, AI, automation, and of course containers. Now fast forward to 2024, Look at the pattern of MLAI in that sector. It began to decelerate coming out of COVID and it bottomed one month before ChatGPT, as we reported before. But look, it's been up and to the right since then. What's more significant is the behavior of the other sectors, which have been pushed down to or uh, at or below that 40% mark. And the other striking data point is the survey pervasion for AI has gone from 24%, which we showed you on the previous chart, to 45% in just over two years. So as we've been reporting, AI is stealing budget from other sectors of the tech economy, and generally the monetization hasn't been there, at least not to the extent where it's causing the overall spending climate to grow. It's not throwing off enough cash. In fact, just the opposite is happening, i.e. the spending outlook remains challenging overall. We've seen the overall macro spending come down. So until AI projects start to throw off enough free cash flow to pay for itself and other projects, we expect the macro to continue to be challenging. Now let's take a look at how spending is occurring on various AI platforms and has changed in the last two years. This table shows the spending profiles for a number of AI players. Uh, this includes all AI, by the way, not just Gen AI. We took da two data point snapshots, one from the January 2022 survey and one from the most recent April 2024 survey. The columns show for each period net score, which again is a measure of spending 
momentum on a platform. Let me take a second to explain that. So NetScore basically takes, it's a measure of the percent of customers that are spending on a particular platform. And the survey methodology asks what percent of the customers or customer, it measures but the percent of the customers that are adding a platform new, spending more on a platform, 6% or more, and spending flat plus or minus 5%, spending down 6% or worse, or churning, leaving the platform. And it, and it the net score methodology subtracts those spending less from those spending more, and that gives you net score. And again, this is percent of customers. It doesn't, it's not an indicator of spending amount. Okay, we're going back to this table. The second column, so that's net score. The second column shows the ends, i.e., the number of respondents saying they're using a specific platform. And we're showing this for 2022. Uh, the January 22 survey and the April 24 survey. So a couple points stand out here. Based on the earlier pervasion data that we saw in the sector, ML and AI is capturing much bigger share of the tech spending market within the survey. In 2022, there was no open AI or Anthropic or Meta Llama in the survey. What? And at the time, both AWS and Google had very strong net scores of around 60%. They're behind Microsoft, but still very strong. But back then, AWS's N was 60% higher than that of Google in the AML AI sector. Now you fast forward to the latest survey and AWS's N is only 8% higher. So Google appears to be closing the gap at, when measured by the percent of customers saying they're using Google for ML and AI. Now Microsoft and OpenAI, as you can see here, they're dominant with just net scores that are off the charts, very big ends that are, you know, for Microsoft over 600 and uh, OpenAI approaching 600. Um, and so you also see Google, of course, closing the gap that we just talked about. We see Anthropic and Meta, Neslava showing very meaningful end in, in some very strong net scores. Now, we don't, really have good measures at this point in time on Amazon Bedrock. So some of that Anthropic and Meta Llama could be going through uh, AWS's Bedrock. We don't know. So AWS may be understated. We're going to dig into that with our friends at ETR. And then Databricks is their sort of traditional ML. I, I hesitate to call it legacy because this is pretty fresh. But anyway, it's traditional ML. It doesn't include DBRX yet, uh, the, the LLM that it just open sourced. Now, I also noticed Snowflake is not on this chart. They're not in the MLAI sector in the ETR data set. My understanding is that they will be. Um, you've got Oracle and IBM. So their, their ends are growing. And they're and interestingly, they're right on top of each other for, the, for both the ends and the net score. Now, in the case of, of IBM, you've got a situation where you have Watson 1.0 is likely declining. And then you got Watson X, which we know is growing, you know, quite nicely. So IBM's in that position where the 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 new is not quite big enough to offset the old. It's growing faster, but there's got to be that's got to get reach some kind of equilibrium before you can see stronger uh, net scores for for Watson. Okay, so the market has changed dramatically since 2022. With AI increasing its presence in the survey and noticeably outperforming other sectors, even pushing other sectors down. Meanwhile, new players are gaining lots of attention. Of course, they're getting funding uh, as well. Meta is a total wild card here because they're open sourcing Llama, and they just, of course, introduced Llama 3, and the battle continues. Coming out of Google Next, combined with its reorg and better AI focus, we'll see how Google fares going forward. Now, Sanjeev Mohan just did a great write-up on Next and what he saw at the show um, and we'll put the link into this post to share that with you. And AWS, again, could be understated because some of the anthropic and meta deployments could be coming uh, through Bedrock, but we don't have that data quite yet. Now, one thing is for sure, you can expect this game of leapfrog or con uh, ping, pong, ping pong to continue. Databricks kind of thinking about using multiple models to build a new breed of data apps. As I said, Snowflake's not represented in ETR's AI sector, but our understanding is they will be shortly. So we're gonna see data from them. And IBM and Oracle continue to represent the large players with big install bases, 
But, you know, many companies aren't represented in this survey that have AI, like take Cisco and Juniper, for instance, which are building AI into their networking. And in the case of Cisco, and its security portfolio. They just made an announcement this week and collaboration software as well with WebEx. So you're seeing AI both purchased separately, but increasingly infused into applications and systems. Okay, that's it for now. I want to thank Alex Meyerson and Ken Schiffman who's on, on production and our podcast. Kristen Martin and Cheryl Knight help get the word out on social media and in our newsletters. And Rob Hoth is our editor-in-chief over at siliconangle.com. Remember, all these episodes are available as podcasts wherever you listen. All you got to do is search Breaking Analysis Podcasts. I publish each week on thecuberesearch.com and siliconangle.com. And you can email me at david.vellante at siliconangle.com or DM me at dvellante. Or feel free to comment on our LinkedIn post. Check out etr.ai for the best survey data in the enterprise tech business. Give them feedback. They want to know what you want to see. Um, and hopefully they respond. I'm sure they will if they, <laughs> if they can. They have a lot on their plate, but they really have been super responsive to uh, the Cube community and th rethinking how some of the taxonomy should look. They, they, they follow thousands and thousands and thousands of companies and sectors and it's a very complicated matter, and they do just a fantastic job. So check them out and give them feedback as to what you'd like to see. Okay, this is Dave Vellante for the Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Breaking.